Hello everybody, I hope you're very well. So, um, a lot of you have asked me, ma'am, how old are you? And, um, you know, if you go on Wikipedia on my page, it says I'm 68 years old, which is not true. So, uh, but of course, I have lived a long life and um, most of you know what all I've gone through because I've just been an open book all my life. Well, I'm going to be 60 this year and and I think most of my life I struggled with weight. Um, it was just like, I don't know, I was a skinny little girl and skinny right through... Um, I think up to 28, 29, I was very thin. And then I just lost all count of where my weight went. And uh, that was a battle, battle of the bulge most of my life. And now with cancer hitting and the doctor saying you have to lose weight and you know, otherwise it'll affect your heart because I'm on the hormone therapy tablets now. And all of that, I have struggled and I have lost up to 15 kilos, which I'm really thrilled about. But I do a lot to do it, uh, to bring down the weight. And I have a long way to go still. And um, but, but I'm happy I'm finally on the right track. But uh, there are a lot of things that you have, which is out of your hands, you know. Weight is one of them, one which is in your hands. You can do anything and everything to lose that weight. And exercise is a huge part of it, but I would say what you put in your mouth and what you choose to eat is very, very important. But what I'm talking about, the things that you can't, you don't have any control about is I found, all right, was when I crossed a certain age, the fact that I had to wear my glasses to read things, I was reading my text messages close up, then it started going further, further, then I realized, okay, I can't do this. I had to wear my glasses. That's one thing. Second is my gray hair. Um, fortunately, I didn't start graying very young. I mean, I have a niece whose father's got a shock of white hair. His whole hair is white and uh, poor thing, she's been coloring her hair forever. I mean, from when she was really young, I think from when she was 20 or 22 years old, she started seeing her first grays. So it's hereditary and uh, gray can happen because of stress. There's premature graying that happened to my niece. And then there are some people like me who start graying a little later in life. And then there are some people like I have an aunt who had an aunt, she passed away, who I think she had two gray hair when she died, you know. It's just amazing. But what we do is we it comes down hereditarily, mostly. But also stress can cause it, medication can cause it, a whole lot of things can cause gray hair. But uh, people ask me, ma'am, how do I stop my hair from graying? We can't stop our hair from graying, whether it's premature graying or whether it comes with age and it just happens, you can't stop it. But what we can do is you can strengthen those roots and if it is because of stress, de-stress yourself. If it's because of a lot of other reasons, then, you know, you need to uh, just look after yourself. And uh, so today I want to talk about my history with hair color. I have been, since I saw my first gray, I just let it go. But then when the gray started bothering me, I started coloring my hair. Remember, I ran salons for close to 34 years and it was easy you know you get up in the morning you look at your roots and say oh my god I need a roots touch up go to the salon sit down on the chair and your hairdresser does a job applies the color and in um, 30 minutes you wash it off and you've got a head full of dark hair and it was great but also through my years and I have strong hair I have abused my hair non-stop so when people say, ma'am, I hate my curly, frizzy hair and I want to straighten my hair. And I keep telling them, I mean, I can't, because it's a chemical, very strong chemical, I tell them, try not to. But uh, I can't tell them, don't do it. Because I have done it probably about 10 times in my lifetime. Yeah. So for a long time, I walked around with absolutely straight hair. People didn't even know my hair was this curly. 
but um, then my dad felt really sick and he uh, he felt really sick and then I just went to the temple and went bald. Since then my hair has grown out curly and has been curly. And I just decided this is how I'm, this is me and this is how I'm going to be. Because I was so fed up of doing roots touch-ups. You straighten your hair, your roots start growing out and your roots are curly, the rest of it is straight. It is ghastly. And also if it's not a good job done, hair is constantly falling. And I didn't have those issues, but most people face those issues. And uh, I was very happy using my chemicalized hair colors. Uh, it didn't it didn't bother me. But uh, I see, as a hairdresser, I've seen people who have come through my career with pigmentation and with hair fall and with drastic um, um, reactions to the PPD in the hair color. And... Uh, other than saying, thank God, it's not happening to me. Uh, I just had a lot of advice to give everybody. Like I was like, you know, you need to stop using chemicalized hair color and start using um, your natural hair colors. And natural hair colors, I think about 15 years ago, was only henna and there was nothing else. And, uh, and henna leaves a horrible ghastly color you know that orangey tarnished horrible look and people were like hectic and upset about it but every time they shifted from henna back to their uh, their chemicalized hair colorants they would react again some people had to be hospitalized and uh, it's so drastic now many people who escape it who don't have a problem then there are certain people who actually react to natural colors as well can you imagine a person reacting to henna or to indigo or to amla or to all those things that go into a natural color? Um, that is sad. Then there is no way out. You have to go gray, uh, naturally gray, you know. Uh, but a uh, very, very small percentage of people actually react to nature, uh, what nature has given us. But I've ha had people write in and say, ma'am, I react to something like, um, aloe vera and I'm like oh my god but there are people who react to natural things as well so so you know you need to if, if you think you're going to react to something always do a patch test mix your in, in you know your powders or your color or whatever do a little dot behind your ear keep it on for the time frame you're supposed to keep your product on and then wash it off keep it for 24 hours and then see if there's any kind of reaction. If there is, don't use the product. If there isn't, go ahead and use it. You're not going to react to it. So having used hair color, uh, chemicalized hair color for years, I was um, and very happy that it wasn't reacting to me. I, uh, I was happy. And then uh, this huge shift in my life happened, you know. Uh, uh, my daughter is, I think, the crux of it. She's the core of uh, uh, my whole mind shift from chemicals to natural products and herbal products. Uh, she is a person who um, strongly advocates rainwater harvesting and, and um, you know, uh, all of that solar energy and, um, you know, farming and she loves all this she's a very she she likes to walk on the grass without her shoes on um, she wants to earth herself she says and all of that and then and then she says Amma you got yourself into a job that is just surrounded with so many chemicals we are you I mean you keep using it and everybody uses it and you really don't know in the long run what kind of harm it can do to you and uh, so I was like a true but you know my dad wasn't that gray so i'm not going to get that gray and all of that this is my my father uh, he had not he had a lot of black hair right look we look just the same i know there's lots of reflection on his picture but um yeah i'm a carbon copy of my dad but uh, just before he passed away he still had a head full of dark hair my mom's hair was of course colored and then when Achin passed away, uh, Amma, when Achin was sick, she went bald. She, she had hair up to her hips. 
she donated the whole thing to the temple. We do that in the south. And uh, then it just grew back and she colored it for a while. Then he passed away and then she never colored her hair after that. And she's got now a head full of gray hair. It looks beautiful. There are some people who gray very beautifully, very naturally. But there are some people, I mean, most of us don't, we don't know, uh, we're not ready for it. We're not ready for that shock of white hair because gray hair automatically adds years to your age. You just start looking older. So um, I was on the lookout for something natural for a long time, actually. And I think Kama was the only uh, uh, company that had henna separate and indigo separate. It was a long procedure. I did it only once. Yeah, I put it on after two hours, henna on, two hours, washed it. And then indigo on, two hours, washed it. Oh my God, of course it got colored. Some parts didn't get colored. Most of it didn't get colored actually, but some did catch. So there was some kind of, yeah, there is something here, you know, this henna and indigo does work magic and without chemicals it does work magic but the two um, stage process was just too long for me so i have been since then i've been on the lookout for the right mix uh, people ask me ma'am how can henna and indigo give you three different hair colors like uh, we have soft black deep brown and burgundy henna indigo with different ingredients that go into it gives you multiple colors not just three colors i chose to bring out three colors but multiple different color tones that you can get from different mixes of herbs how cool is that so there is no there is absolutely then i started well we brought out the henna indigo that's what it looks like and we got it out in three colors the soft black the deep brown and the burgundy and my story with my own product <clears throat> it was it was crazy because very happily okay fine no more chemicals i'm going completely uh, this is before i brought it out um the whole trial period that happened i said i am going to uh, mix it and use it and the thing is you don't mix this in a lohe ka kadai and keep it overnight nothing you just take the measurement you measure out the powder that you need and then you pour hot water or warm water and mix it and i add half a teaspoon of salt in it because the salt helps the indigo release its color the indigo releases its color for a very short time then it stops releasing so if you're going to mix this mix and keep it overnight indigo has released the color and then stopped and then you put it on it's not going to work so you need to mix it and within 10 15 minutes use the product now uh, what i uh, my experience with this uh, henna indigo in the beginning i was frustrated i was so upset because i am not a patient person especially for stuff like this i'm a patient person for a lot of other things but um, but i can't lie down and get a facial done in my whole entire life i've done two facials because i can't lie down and do it i can't sit down and get put stuff on my hair and then wait for x amount of time two three hours and then uh, wash it off it's that, that's not me but then I, I learned patience with this product. I learned absolute and utter patience with this product. So applied it, kept it on for two and a half hours, very excited, washed it off. My gray was still very visible. There was a slight color taken, but very visible. And that is because, I mean, I have only told millions of clients that, you know, you need to be patient. This, if your hair is chemically treated in any which way, whether it's smoothened, straightened, colored, whatever it is, permed, the henna indigo, this natural product will take time to catch. So I said, okay, patient, be patient. Did it the second time, third time, fourth time, and it was still not catching. One side that started catching, the other side was still showing as gray. I was so upset. I was like thinking, oh my God, if I bring this product out and uh, pre people start using it, and uh, if I don't get to, because when you bring out a product, when I'm talking about it on my social media handles, only those people know what I'm talking about. But now I have gone and put it in the Lulu uh, hypermarket in 
uh, Cochin and in Trivandrum. So there are people who are not on my page who are walking, picking up the product and they don't know that, um, you know, that it, you have to be patient and that it takes time to catch. So I hope eventually this, uh, this message goes out to everybody who's choosing to use this product that with patience and I cannot tell you one fine day when I, I think it was on my fourth or the fifth application, washed my hair and every single strand was colored. And I was like, yes, I've done it. I was super, super thrilled. And, um, and I have advocated it strongly to people who are going through huge issues with the reactions to PPD. People who've made up their mind that I am going to say no to chemicals and I'm moving on to natural hair colors, that this is the product that one should uh, try to use. Now, these are natural products. All colorants color the shaft of the hair. That is how the, the hair becomes from gray to black, brown, burgundy or whatever color that you choose to use. So it is coloring and coating each strand. Now, these are natural products which are not that sophisticated like the chemicalized hair colors. But so they hold, they, they color, they hold on and they hold on nice and strong. And uh, the beauty of the henna indigo is that when your hair starts growing out, there is no demarcation. You know, when you use hair color and then your hair starts growing out and you, you don't have access to coloring your hair, you are upset <laughs> so badly upset i used to do it it used to happen to me because the deep the gray and then there's a line and then the black happens it is drastic i know people have walked into my uh, salon this one lady used to come and say ambika i look like a raccoon and i'm like oh my god because the gray was stark and then the line was even starker and then the black was even more starker so um with the henna indigo that's not what happens it's a very soft and beautiful grow out because uh, from the gray to the natural uh, the, the color that we've used the natural hair colorants it's a it's a fade it's not a stuck line which is which is amazing but also because of its natural qualities uh, people like me frizzy curly hair you can um, it can get uh, you can feel really dry and um, you know um, brittle and for that i tell you i mean after you use this hair color, you're, you're supposed to rinse it out thoroughly and then after 48 hours, uh, oil it, shampoo, condition. You can do anything after 48 hours because even after you rinse out your hair, the, uh, the color is still act acting on your hair, still catching on, getting darker. Now, I am highly asthmatic and um, I cannot st stand strong smells. So I, even though I'm not supposed to shampoo my hair, I do. I, I apply the henna indigo, wait for two hours, completely rinse it out in a very, very light shampoo. I do it to take out all the henna indigo smell, whatever, everything, the, because of the, the, it has a certain fragrance. And then I condition my hair. And uh, the color doesn't, obviously, if I leave it on for 48 hours, it'll be much starker, much stronger. It isn't, but I'm okay with it because my hair is curly, flops on my head and you can't really see the roots. So, um, so I'm okay with that. But people with straight hair, they can't afford to, uh, you know, um, let the gray show at all. If you're trying to color your hair to cover the gray, then um, wait for 48 hours. But also what you can do if your hair is getting brittle and, um, you know, um, dry, what you can do is after you rinse your hair out, um, put conditioner through your hair and nicely emulsify, massage the conditioner into your hair, wash it off. And we have the AP Hair Repair Serum. It's just a drop of oil or a few drops. Put it through towel dried wet hair and you see that your hair is soft and like I don't have a problem with, I mean, my hair is frizzy and curly and rough and everything, but I'm not battling those strange, horrible, uh, you know that very brittle and all that it's still exactly like my normal hair so th this is what you can do you can definitely um, use a conditioner after the rinse you know I've made this video because there are just so many people who ask so many questions about this product and uh, this product is here only 
if you want to move from chemicalized colors to natural colors and you don't want to do a two uh, step uh, process this is a pre-mixed uh, product which is just god sent it is amazing the things that we can get from nature that can battle almost just about everything and uh, yeah i am now completely hooked on to this i am completely hooked on to the henna indigo i am thrilled that i have brought it out and it is iconic to say the least so uh, this is one way out for people who want to say no to chemicals and go for a 100% natural hair color even though i'm saying it here again and again that it is a 100% natural hair color people still ask me ma'am will i react to it now if you react to natural hair colors do a patch test and then use it but otherwise ma'am uh, will i react to it because are there any chemicals in it no there are no chemicals in it it is 100% natural and um, i think this is basically what i wanted to tell you today that uh, choose your products wisely and make your choices wisely you know we uh, want to say no to i mean even though uh, i've been very happy with the henna indigo just before i went into surgery it was december it was cold my roots were gray and i was so upset because in that cold i did not want to put henna indigo on my hair because it is a cold product and um it was i think after my surgery that once i got somebody to come in and do a chemicalized hair color because in half an hour then i wash it off and it was gone and then i did it and i was so so upset and i said then i got myself that hot cap and uh, now I, I, when it's cold now it's not cold it's really really hot and it's a it's a blessing to have that cold thing on my head but uh when it's cold i use a hot cap which is electric you can plug it in it stays warm and so people who have sinusitis who have uh, migraines when they use when their head is cold uh, you i i would advise you to get that uh, hot cap you can get it online and uh, just plug it in it stays nice and warm and you're fine and also what i used to do is i used to put my hands on the hot water bag in my feet also when it is very very cold but um, so these are things for everything there's a way out um i i only worry about the people with uh, migraines and um um you know sinusitis and the people who don't have any patience whatsoever <laughs> then this is a product that you will have a problem adjusting to but otherwise for the rest of us who want to say no to chemicalized products this is your product so i shall see see you very very my tug is getting tired i shall see you all very very soon and uh, just stay happy stay safe bye